Hello everybody, welcome back to Walt and Sarah's channel. Today we're going to be making these adorable trick-or-treat bags customized with your little one's name. So to get started, grab up your typical Cricut tools, turn on your machine, let it get a little warmed up there. You'll hear that nice little buzz knowing that it is starting up and ready to go. You can go ahead and get your vinyl ready. Today I'm just using black on orange. I love the simplicity of the colors on each other so i am also using my ipad for this i'm going to show you how to use the cricut design studio you're going to add the image and just to save some time i'm going to type in the search box here jack-o-lantern face and it really narrows it down if you just type in jack-o-lantern you're going to have a million billion trillion photos so if you type in the word face at the end it kind of narrows it down just to have the eyes the nose the mouth and there are still tons to choose from but again, I'm just looking for simple. I don't want to overdo it. It's just a little trick-or-treat bag. It's going to be dark out anyway. So I'm just taking the simplest face I can find, one that I like. And then I'm just adding a text on the bottom here. And really the font comes down to what you're looking for. If you want it to be fancy and script cursive, then do it. If you want it to be blocky and chunky, do that. If you buy fancy fonts from Cricut, by all means, do it up. Um, I just like this one here. Uh, it's super cute. It's super simple. And at this point, I am just trying to line things up. I'm not going to group the two images together because I kind of want to go old school with this. I'm going to let the Cricut machine print it out um, all on one page. As you saw, I just laid down the black in the beginning of the video. And I'm just going to let the Cricut machine print it out how it feels fit. And then when I trim it and when I place it onto the bag, I'm going to line it up right before I press it instead of grouping the images together or the font and the jack-o'-lantern. And um, here I'm just kind of messing with my lettering a little bit, pushing them together, spacing them out, whatever needs to be done to kind of fill it up and make it look the best. And as you guys saw in the beginning, we're only using black vinyl. And rather than have this print twice, I am going to change the jack-o'-lantern's face to black by clicking cut down at the bottom and just selecting the black little emblem there. And simple as that, now the Cricut machine knows that we are only using this one color. Once you are done designing and spacing out your images, you're going to click the bottom right button that says make it. This is going to take you to your make screen, which also shows you what your mats are going to look like. You can see like this white outline of how it's going to cut your vinyl. And then you can make sure that your vinyl is placed onto your mat properly. So here I am just connecting to my machine because this is the first project that I'm doing for the day. So I actually have to Bluetooth connect to my machine, my Cricut machine, of course. Also, since this is going to be an iron-on transfer, super important that you hit mirror image. Next on our to-do list is to hit everyday iron on. I know I went pretty quick there, but you have to click everyday iron on. And now this is just, this isn't Cricut brand uh, vinyl. This is actually uh, something I got off of Amazon that this counts the, you know, I like to save money. So this is your final chance to make sure that all your settings are correct. Um, and then you're just going to get ready to load it into your machine and let the Cricut do all the hard work. So you see here it says detecting tool. Then it changes over to cutting. Now don't worry, I'm not gonna make you sit through the whole cutting process, although it isn't very long, it's, it's a quick one, but I am gonna speed this up um, just so you guys aren't sitting through the very tedious process of the machine cutting the vinyl. Though it is interesting to watch and it isn't very long, uh, I just think it's kind of brutal to make you guys sit through it. And I'm just peeling off the entire piece of vinyl here. You'll see it says action complete. So our software is finished, our vinyl is cut. Here I am just trimming it down. I told you I did not group the jack-o'-lantern face and the name. So I have two pieces of vinyl instead of one. Either way would have been fine, but um, I decided to do two. I figured I would save a little bit more vinyl that way instead of having that gap worth of material that I can't really use anyway. So I did two pieces and that's fine. And again, I'm just speeding this up a little bit, but this is me weeding the vinyl. It was mirrored when I cut it, so it's all ready to go. That's why it looks a little silly right now on camera, but it looked good in person when you flipped it around and viewed it from the clear side. 
So this is another time where I'm going to speed this up because I feel like you guys sitting here watching me line this up and press it 20 times is just going to take too much and you guys are going to get bored and you're going to click out and say, okay, this video was horrible. So I figured if I speed it up a little bit, you're not really missing much. The heat press is pulled down and it's counting down. One thing I will note is I made this bag two times before I got the finished product. Two other additional times. The first time I completely burned the bag up and you'll actually might see some orange stuff coming off of my heat press because... I burned the bag. I went to go straighten it out. I wanted to just flatten it out a little bit and it just burned a hole right through. It was horrible. It was traumatizing. Now, the second time, my vinyl, I used the recommended press at time and temperature, but it was too hot and it was just too much for the bag. And the vinyl just didn't stick and then I ended up burning a side, a little piece, like a corner of the bag. I ended up burning that and you're going to get to see that bag at the end, kind of like my blooper little video extra clip there. But I realized if I lowered the temp and just kept checking it 15 seconds at 225 degrees, I'm able to get my vinyl to stick. And then I ended up with this really adorable little project. But getting that temperature right for the vinyl was critical in the success of this project. And here I am. Always unplug your machine when you're done. Especially if you have children in your house. Um, yeah, so this is my finished project. This is one that, this is my third bag, and it actually turned out super adorable. I'm so happy with it. Um, if you're interested in the bag and you want me to make you one, you can buy it off my website. Link in the description. I promise I will not send you any of this stuff. This, this is trial and error. This is all part of it. So here's your little bonus clip. This is me messing this up completely. And I decided to put this in here because I want to make it very clear that you're going to mess up, okay? Nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes. This was kind of like a silly one. Like after I did it, I told myself, oh, you should have known better. Especially when I completely burned the bag. I thought I had that footage. And I was actually excited to show you guys that like, you know, I've had my Cricut machine for a year now. And I make YouTube videos. And I am not an expert by any means. But it happens. It absolutely happens. And it's going to happen to you. And don't act like it never did. It's okay. It's okay to burn up your material. It's okay to ruin your heat press. It's okay. Just figure a way to fix it. Find out what the problem was and move forward from it. I mean, isn't that a lesson for life? Figure out what went wrong. Figure out a way to fix it. And you'll be fine. Look at that. Oh, ugly. So thank you guys. 